Hello, my name is Rachel Carroll. I'm President and Managing Partner at Edison. Today we're going to be talking about graphene. In 2010, two UK scientists were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for their work in graphene, heralded as one of the most versatile and promising materials ever discovered. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Adrian Potts, one of the leading innovators in the field of graphene. His company, Applied Graphene Materials, has recently turned the corner to commercialization. Adrian, welcome. Hi, Rachel. It's great to be here, and thanks for the opportunity. Great. Um, Adrian, perhaps you could begin by giving us a brief introduction to Applied Graphene Materials. Yeah, so... Um, as you mentioned, graphene was a great, uh, great discovery um, about 15 years ago now in terms of isolating the material. And in parallel with that, our founding professor out of the University of Durham in the UK, uh, Professor Carl Coleman, was looking at methodology on how to synthetically manufacture that material to achieve a practical solution and a, and a commercial viability. Uh, for that material. So in the early days of the business, we actually uh, were focused on industrialization of that material. But then the realization came that you really have to, um, you really have to be able to put that graphene material, the powder that we make, into something to make it really usable and really effective in terms of the, uh, the utility of the material when you're adding it to uh, other things like paints and coatings and composite materials um, to enable uh, performance enhancements. So that, that is our focus as a business, both the manufacture of graphene, the enabling, um, the enabling product format, and that's what we call dispersion. So we have a great technology in terms of putting graphene into things to make it use, usable and useful. And then, of course, all the technology that goes along with that to prove out the materials actually work. Excellent. Thank you. And so at the end of last year, you announced a strategic realignment to the business to focus on this graphene dispersion technology, which you believe will be the near term revenue driver for the business. But, and in 2020, you've announced a, a number of important distribution deals. Perhaps you could give us a little bit more context as to what these deals mean in terms of Salesforce numbers, your geographical footprint now, and anything you can disclose in terms of anticipated sales. Yeah, so, um, so I mean, we, we, we were a startup out of a university 10 years ago. It's, it, this is our 10 year anniversary at the end of July, just gone. Um, so, you know, we've, we've seen great traction in terms of product innovation, product development, and, and enabling technology. Uh, we now feel that the time, our time has come, um, really, in terms of opportunity. You know, we've started out with a small sales force and uh, trying to establish a position on a, um, on a reasonably global footprint, I would say. But, you know, of course, that's a struggle um, with, a, with, with small numbers. And uh, we've had to be very strategic about where we operate and uh, and and conversely, where we, where we don't feel that we can add value. So we've been very focused in terms of what we do and how we do it. So as you mentioned, um, you know, we've recently announced a number of different uh, agreements for different geographic territories. So uh, over the past month or so, uh, an agreement with a company called Will & Co um, in the Benelux countries, so uh, covering the Netherlands and uh, Belgium and Luxembourg and then with uh, one of the larger uh, distribution houses in Europe, Arpardis. So that will cover the UK, Germany, France and Spain and Portugal and Scandinavia. And then latterly, um, just, just a couple of weeks ago, our great agreement with uh, Maroon Group here in, the, uh, here in the United States. So you asked about numbers. Um, so small sales group from a small entity has suddenly uh, suddenly risen to about 60 um, on a global footprint um, of sales representatives uh, in in various corners of the uh, of the global opportunity to um, 
to enhance the uh, enhance the opening and, and, and offering of our of our products. So um, as well as those geographic areas that I talked to, you know, we, we currently have uh, distribution arrangements in place in Italy, um, right the way through to Japan, and we announced a uh, an agreement with Dichem in Greece um, fairly recently. So you can see that we're adding to uh, that momentum opportunity in terms of footprint, in terms of sales force, in terms of product offering, and in terms of engagement. Um, you asked about expectation, and you know clearly don't talk about specific numbers, but um, you know the, the the key thing for us, I think, is is coupling together technical expertise, uh, commercial footprint, and a robust product platform, and bringing that together to enable revenue growth. And, and I said right at the start of this, you know, the the time is right to to do that. We've arrived at a uh, a level of maturity in terms of product offering and the time is right for us to be able to take that to market um, so right products right place right people uh, with the right expertise to achieve an enhanced sales position fantastic thank you and, and that is tremendous growth both from a geographical perspective but also you know going from almost a starting point to 60 new salespeople. So how as a management team, are you managing that, that growth and, and, and ensuring that salespeople can effectively sell on your behalf? Yeah, so uh, training of course is everything and, and we'll be going through that training process with each of these, uh, each of these engagements to, uh, to create awareness, not just of um, products in tins, you know, it, it, it's much more, um, much more involved in that. But I think where we have seen uh, great success in terms of our customer engagements so far has been in terms of the, the technical uh, solutions that we're able to offer. So in terms of technology, it's not just about selling tins of additive. It's about what that additive will actually do. And in terms of the the level, the strength, the depth, the breadth of the technical support that we're able to offer, um, I think that is outstanding. So in terms of technical training, yeah, of course, there's awareness of, of the actual products and product pricing and all that sort of general stuff. But much more important is the actual what graphene will do and the effectiveness of that product. Um, you know, the we, we've been very targeted in the distribution engagements that we've arrived at really to latch on to um, the strengths that those distributors offer, not just on a geographical basis and, and people count, but in terms of the quality of engagement, the areas that they're operating in, and the level of technical support that they are able to offer. Now, at the end of the day, our end objective is simply for customers to be satisfied with the products that we sell. And you know, what does that look like in reality? That they have a successful engagement, that they're able to take graphene, that they're able to add it to their coating system or their composite material or their adhesive technology and see a performance enhancement utilizing what we have to offer. So you know, when you look at that as a as a product and technology offering end to end, we believe we've really got the tools in place to be able to do that. And now we've got the sales footprint and the correct partners to enable that to happen uh, alongside our own efforts. Great, thank you. And you're obviously the CEO of the, of the business based in the US. Um, the yeah. Maroon deal, I, I anticipate, will be of particular interest to US investors, given that it's a well-known North American distributor of specialty chemicals. What does this announcement mean or signal for your US strategy? The reason that I maintained my presence in the US uh, since taking on the CEO role was, um, was really to maintain momentum commercially with the, uh, with the engagements that we have uh, developed over the past few years. Um, so, I mean, working, working together with Maroon is a, a tremendous opportunity and it's a real, um, it, it, 
it's of great credit, I feel, to that, they, that they're keen to work with us, that they recognize the quality of the products that we, that we have in place and the maturity of the products that we have in place. Um, Maroon themselves, I mean, they're incredibly successful business. They're a large business. They've got a great footprint. They operate in the, in the sweet spot that we are operating in, particularly in the area of uh, coatings, adhesive sealants and elastomers and, uh, you know, being based in, in the sort of coating centric area of the United States uh, is really important as well. So, you know, and, and, and to what I talked about before about not just having feet on the ground, but having the technical capabilities to be able to sell the product well and be able to engage with customers on a, on a meaningful way. It checks all the boxes for us. So in terms of expansion of, uh, of revenue bearing engagements, at the end of the day, you know, they're the right partner for us. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about the opportunity that it presents and, uh, and you know, where it will lead together. Well, congratulations. You know, great announcement and, and certainly great momentum this year. And you recently posted, so, you know, revenues are up 35% year on year. You've got a clean balance sheet with no debt, cash that takes you through to the end of next year. So what's next for the, for the company? Over the next six months, what should investors look out for? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we, we obviously want to, uh, want to realize the potential of the distribution agreements that, we, that we've put in place. And as, you, as we've talked to, you know, that involves training and getting them up to speed and, and, and all that good stuff. Um, you know, but I, I, I firmly believe that we'll hit the ground running um, with regard to uh, quality of engagement, number of engagements, and numbers of opportunities. At the same time, you know, we want to mature the, uh, the broad pipeline of opportunities that we, that we already have in place. We've, we've seen some uh, great growth recently in terms of customer announcements, of customers bringing products to market. Uh, that's a great testament, not just to graphene in general, but to our product offering. And it really, you know, it says a huge amount to, uh, to the quality of the engagement, the quality of the process, the level of technical support that we offer, and the confidence ultimately that customers have uh, in our products to be able to not just use them, but, but launch their own products in the space that they operate in so you know you know we're expecting some great things as uh, as the uh, the global industry starts to come out of coronavirus and you know there's a return to work there's access to assets um, to be able to carry out those jobs and we're starting to see that now um, in a number of areas in the UK with uh, with uh, companies like all times coatings who um, launched their Advantage Graphene product uh, with Blocksil Coatings, who have their graphene product called Top Coat MT. They're starting to uh, see those products um, accredited, specified, contracted on a whole range of jobs. And, uh, you know, we will start to see the revenue coming from those as access to those jobs becomes available. Um, and then other things, you know, we, we just recently announced our listing on, on OTC on an enhanced basis for QB status. And for investors, that allows investors to engage in, in what we're doing directly. So, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. We're looking to expand what we do in the U.S. We're serious about the U.S. as a, uh, as a great market opportunity. The USA has always been uh, front and center in terms of innovation and technology and uh, you know we're looking to enhance what we do and be a, a greater part of that we, we believe we've got some great products to offer uh, formatted in a great way we've now got the great conduits to market in place so yeah looking forward to success great well it's been a pleasure speaking with you adrian thank you so much for taking the time yeah. thanks rachel like... thanks for the opportunity thank you very much and if you'd like to learn more about applied graphene materials, please visit the Edison Group website where you can access free research on the company. Thank you.